Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason. This is Daily Hypnotic Buffet. I think it's number five because it's the 5th of uh, January 2018. So, oh, I'm a bit chilly. not cold but it's a little bit I've just moved you know when you move from a chair and you get up and maybe room, walk to another room and then you walk back and it's sometimes the light even seems a bit different because you've gone into a different maybe a, a better lit room and I kind of sat down and I'm a bit chilly anyway I'm gonna have a cup of coffee while I'm talking to you I was just uh, giving Andre a cuddle, but he's gone back to sleep. He's been sleeping a lot, more than me. Today I've been, I was up till early hours of the morning and then I went to bed. Got up for a short period and then I went back to bed again, so I was a little bit, uh, I feel like I was catching up on my sleep a little bit, I'm not sure. But I'm feeling alright now. Just a little bit tired, I was earlier. And now I'm tired again. Mm. So I'd like to thank those of you that have been watching my videos on YouTube, Vimeo, my website, Facebook, Twitter, and those of you, which is a larger audience, have been listening to and downloading my MP3s on iTunes and SoundCloud. So, as usual, I, I have, uh, I kind of have a subject matter in a sense, and usually the subjects that come up are things that have uh, arisen on the day that I'm talking about. A couple of things that I've been thinking about is one also remember only watch or listen to me when you can safely close your eyes because I will bore you into a sense of comfort relaxation and drowsiness and boredom with my exciting voice so I've been thinking about a couple of things one is, I was watching Big Brother, celebrity, celebrity Big Brother on television, just now actually. And there is a transgender person in the house. So it's, they've got like um, a theme this year, a woman's year. We're celebrating women. It's a uh, hundred years since women had the vote in England, and um, so they let they got in half the house. They got all the women in first for on I think Tuesday night, and now tonight they're getting the men in. So they had a transgen transcend tran transgender. I can't say the word. Uh, lady called India, and. Some of the other housemates, only a couple to her face, have accidentally said he when referring to her other than she. And uh, one was Anne Widdicombe, and uh, that's a, a former um, politician in this country. And she apologised when she did it. And then uh, another one is... Amanda Barry, who's a famous actress in this country, and she uh, she used to be in Coronation Street and was also in films before that. But when she said it, she, she said it before apparently, but she said it tonight. It was last night, but they're showing a preview of last night. And then she, she said it and she giggled. And she basically she was laughing at herself, clearly. It was obvious, you know, when you make a mistake, you say something, you realise, oh, I can't believe I said that again. And you laugh at yourself. 
but the other person might think that you're laughing at them when really you're not. It's just laughing at your own uh, silliness or your own, oh, I can't believe I made that mistake again. And Amanda is an 82-year-old lady. And from my memory of, I'm just thinking about my nan, quite often she would, you know, when she got more elderly, she would say the wrong name. She'd call me by different people's names. Sometimes she'd go through about four names before she got to my name. And not all of those names were male. It's true, sometimes you're like going, you're right, Robert, uh, John, um, uh, Teresa, uh, Jason, and she'd get to me. And I got used to it. It's, you know, she was, from the age of when I was first got to know her, she was elderly already then. And she was 96 when she died um, a couple of years back, three years ago. So I kind of just, I'm, I'm, I know it's a stereotype, but I, I've got, I suppose I've generalised, but I think that anybody of a, an elderly age should be given a little bit of slack, you know, just, just let them off if they make mistakes or their memory isn't as great as maybe what it was, you know, uh, maybe call someone by the wrong name. I call people by the wrong names sometimes. So India, the transgender uh, lady, it really reacted really badly. Well, she responded, she reacted in a quite a hostile way towards Amanda. So I was kind of, I wasn't conflicted so much, but I don't like seeing elderly people being attacked verbally. Because she doesn't look 82, but she is 82. You know, the fact that she's, a lot of people never get to that age. You know, 82 is above the average age of living, I think, is or around that age. And it's very rare, you know, so to see someone at that age, not rare, but it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's just, it's a degree of respect and forgiveness maybe is needed when dealing with somebody that is in their 80s. And I, I kind of would pretty much let an 80 year old say anything and not take offense. In the same way as I'd let an eight year old pretty much say anything and not take offense. Because to me it would be the same thing, getting upset with a small child getting upset with a very, very, very elderly person. Both who are in the zones of not always being able to maybe mentally process in the same way as the eight year old will do when they get older and the way that the 80 plus year old person would have done when they were younger. So I don't know, maybe I don't feel that's prejudiced against elderly people because hell, I'm 47, so I'm, I'm only about 35 years behind her. So yeah, um, or less, maybe even less than that. So I just got this whole, this thing was going on on telly and I was thinking about transgender and what it must be like. And I think it's a it can be a bit of a dangerous area here to think what it must be like to be, uh, to go through that process, a transition from being a male to a female, uh, but having felt like you was always a, ma a female your whole life, or the other way around, you know, being um, a female and thinking and feeling that you were a male and then going through the process, the transitional, I mean, it's one of the hardest things I can imagine anyone goes through. I don't know about other countries, but in England, you have to um, live as 
the sex that you feel you are. So if you're a man and you feel that you're a woman and you want to go through the physical transition, as in the operation and stuff, hormone treatment, you, I, th I do believe you have to live as a woman for a number of years before you're allowed to have the treatment. And you can also have to go through psychological treatment, analysis, you know, to make sure that you are, um, I'm not sure what they're looking for to be fair, but they, they push you through these hoops to get through. Um, I suppose they're trying to make sure that you're sure because it's a, it's not a very reversible process, I imagine. But how can I know what that's like? How can anyone know what it's like? Because it's going to be different for everybody. It's that whole thing we love to push people into a category and you know if you go on any forum they say on Facebook for those of you that are watching this in the future Facebook was a website which people forgot was just a website and they really took it as being real life and eventually people realized that actually it was just a website and it just vanished just like all the other websites previously that used to dominate people's lives and they went onto another website. So anyway, whatever website you're using now, you might be watching this on that one. So a few people got rich from it. So I'm just thinking, if you go onto some of these forums on various websites, let's say for example, personality disorders or bipolar, uh, there's two two forums that I go on. Also, I've been on some of the chronic pain websites, fibromyalgia, for example. There's a big attitude of, we're all in this together. I understand what you're f going through. When actually, it's very different. Everybody experiences things differently. And, and it's evident by the amount of infighting that goes on on some of these forums, some of these groups, because by typing in something into, uh, you know, onto a platform, on you know, onto a Facebook page, it doesn't necessarily express. It doesn't go go forward the way that you're feeling. Doesn't necessarily those feelings don't enter into the person that reads those words. They add their own words to those feelings. Those words have a, a different trigger, maybe that trigger different emotions. So I was sitting there watching this uh, program, Big Brother. I found myself getting annoyed at India for how she was uh, talking to Amanda Barry. And trust me, this is the only time that I've really ever talked about Big Brother and used the names because I generally don't bother learning the names. But on this occasion, I, I have. India is an easy word to, name to remember. And Amanda Barry, I knew of her anyway. Never, never heard of India before. Uh, India used to be apparently a, a newsreader in the past on television. So... And what was interesting is when India walked out of the room, there was, I think, four people in the room talking about India, talking about that whole situation of calling her he by accident. And they dropped all that calling, calling India she. They kept saying he, kept referring to India as he throughout that conversation. And that's what, I guess, naturally comes across. And maybe... Maybe it's easier for people to, in their mind, to refer to someone as she, as a woman, if they never knew beforehand. Because then there's no mental conflict. There's no uh, little thing in the mind saying, he, he, no, this is she, it's she. It's like just, and I don't think it comes from malice. 
if it was malice, then you'd just be purposely keep repeating the word he, he, he all the time. That's malice, um, I would say. And I'm trying to put myself into that situation, and however bad it sounds, I don't know if I'd do it now, but if I was in a situation like that, and I saw Amanda Barry get attacked verbally by this uh, India lady, um, I would feel compelled to keep saying he. Not because I'm anti anything, it's just because I would be anti India because of the viciousness towards an elderly lady. Uh, it's weird, it's just like I can't afford that and then I thought, but that would be horrible thing, that would be nasty as well. And then I start thinking, is that the same as being racist to somebody, calling someone uh, a racist term to their face? So it's kind of got me thinking, it's like it really opened my mind and got me in fact, it got me thinking to a point where it actually got in the way of watching the program because I was just churning this stuff over, just think, putting myself in that position. Of course, I'm never going to be in Celebrity Big Brother, but what would I do in that situation? Because my natural um, response is how I've been in the past is to defend somebody that has been attacked. You could say technically both of them were attacking each other. You know, so I'm sure there's some people thinking that Amanda was attacking India by saying he. Which is an in another interesting thing that comes up is there is an easy way to avoid calling India he. How about calling India India? So when you're talking about India when she's not in the room, you say India. When you're talking about India when she's in the room, well, direct it to India directly. So it's, it's a, there's a way around that. I have had experience with transgender people. Uh, I met somebody who's a Buddhist and between 92 and 94, yeah, so I met this person in 92. In 94, no, not 92, 2002. In 2004, somebody mentioned about this person's operation. And I didn't understand it. It was in a context of, um, the context made sense. It wasn't uh, gossip. It was actually a really serious conversation about a process that we were talking about. I'm not gonna go into details, but and I was like, what? So he said, yeah, when, when she had the operation, the trans, transgender operation or whatever. I don't think it was even called transgender back then. I think that's a, wasn't, that wasn't a commonly used term. I had no idea. It didn't, she was a woman, that's all I knew. And the idea that she was a man still doesn't make sense it's just like no she's a woman because that's what I knew and I didn't see her any differently as as I had before it's like just that's weird just it was just a bit strange to find out something about somebody that you didn't know and she lived like a, lived like a woman she lived as a woman and didn't talk about previously being a man it wasn't uh, a subject opener. Some people you meet them for the first time and they'll talk tell you all about their problems and all about their operations that they've had and you know they'll go into like extreme detail in a very short period of time. Um, other people just are very vague and they won't say anything. And I quite like that idea maybe of just take me for who I am now. I'm like that with new relationships. If I meet a woman that 
I'm only laughing to myself if I meet a woman. I can't remember the last time I met a woman. But if I met, meet a woman, I just, this is me. This is who I am. And I've been on two dates that, I've been on more than two dates, but there was two specific, more recent kind of dates that I went on, uh, I say recent, in the last few years. And both of them were just, actually one was in 2004, so that's quite a while ago. But another one was a couple of years back. And they were, I felt like I was, I don't know if you've seen Mastermind, I don't know if you have Mastermind in other countries, but it's basically a big black chair where they get bombarded with questions. So it's a show on television in, in England. You might get it other countries. Just bombarded with questions, question after question after question after question. And I've had a couple of uh, dates, first dates that were like that. Um, one of them, it weren't so bad because I ended up having sex at the end, but another one, it was just it was just a bit too much. So I just question after question after question after question. And I'd rather, I think it's more fun just to talk about who you are now, who I am now, because we're not the same as we were when we were 20 or 30 or you know, 10, 20 years ago, depending on your age. And if you are, and if you really do believe you're exactly the same person, then that's something worth looking at. Because maybe you're not being honest with yourself, perhaps. You know, some people, I've seen this on Facebook, Again, it's a website that used to be on. <laughs> if you're watching this in the future, it was crap. It was a crappy website. It was really rubbish, full of hostility. Oh man, it was an awful website. But it's good for sharing videos and stuff like that and pictures of Andre. So, I forget what I was talking about now. I just. Yeah, that I've seen yeah, I've seen comments and posts where people say, I will never change. Like they're really like they're proud of themselves, I will never change. No one will ever make me change. Okay. I understand that bit, no one else will make you change, but I will never change. Nothing will make me change. I'll always be the same. No. The only time you'd be the same is when you're dead. You're dead and then you're the same. You can't we change every day. Every, every minute of every day something's happening unless you're even if you're sitting in a complete darkened room without any television no reading no music no human contact you will change I'm guessing maybe not for the better I'm guessing it's that's a you know that that is a that's a prison isn't it basically that's a, uh, could be possibly mental torment for a lot of people Apart from those that maybe have got some kind of meditation practice and they're able to meditate during that period. But for someone with a, an active mind pushed into that situation, it would probably be horrific for them. So the idea that, oh, I'm never going to change, I'm always going to be the same, is in itself is a very kind of childish, I guess, thing to say. And I know because I'm full of childish ideas and childish thoughts because I'm very immature. So there. Oh God, I'm drinking that coffee and I only had a tiny little bit of sugar to put into it and it tastes horrible. I only have one, one spoonful of sugar in a coffee. I don't have lots of sugars, but less than one spoonful is just... Uh, really bleh. but I got no money to buy anything so I need I quite like to have a can of coke or something but I got no I got no cash so what I was thinking is what would it be like to be so different or to feel rather to feel completely alien to the people that you're surrounded by 
and that's how I've spent my entire life. I don't feel that I'm trapped in a woman's body. I don't feel I'm trapped in a man's body either. I don't think I'm uh, anything. I don't think I'm, uh, when it comes to sexuality, I'm just, there is really not much in the way of issues there as far as change is needed. I mean, I could do have a bigger penis, but, uh, and a girlfriend and the ability to, and, you know, to look better as well and to be handsome and be taller. I quite like to, I sometimes wonder, would I choose a bigger penis or to be taller? So I think I'd probably go for half, half. So instead of having a, a penis four inches bigger, I'd probably go two inches higher and two inches bigger on the penis. I'd probably go like half it, if that was possible. So I'd be, I'd still only be 5'10", but 5'10 compared to 5'8", and uh, I won't go into other details, but I've always felt like an alien. There was times when I was younger, when I was a baby, not a baby, when I was a kid rather, I used to think that there was an alien, there was an alien ship going to come and collect me, that, you know, it must be time. Because I was nothing like my parents, nothing like my dad, nothing like, didn't really feel anything like my brothers, um, didn't really connect with pretty much anyone. I could on a superficial level sometimes, but not on a, just didn't feel like I knew what to say to people or knew what their... I don't know what I didn't I still struggle with that sometimes what what are people's intentions when someone asks a question when someone asks me for something or um, I just wonder or some people's behavior I wonder what their intention is and I suppose reality is a lot of people don't have intentions they're just living their life in the moment and perhaps enjoying themselves and they're not really <laughs> giving it a lot of thought and I guess there's nothing wrong with that but I've never I always I always felt like a, an alien I could never follow the crowd to fit in I wanted to f fit in I think but I never was able to do what was necessary because what was necessary meant doing something that I was not interested in. And I can only give time to things that I'm interested in. I've never been able to give any effort into things that I don't care about, which is why I was uh, pretty much, I left school with no qualifications. I didn't put any effort into any lessons apart from RE. And the only reason I put energy into lessons of RE is because my RE teacher, I had two really lovely RE teachers. I was quite lucky actually. Um, I wasn't massively interested in religion, but I wasn't disinterested, if that makes sense. I was found, I think I've always found religion interesting, um, not academically, but just from a, a belief system way of thinking. But my, I had one RE teacher. I, had, I think I had two RE teachers throughout my high school of five years. The first one, he, he liked me. And that's another thing. I think because two, both of my RE teachers were kind to me. That makes a lot of difference. Really, I wish this would catch on. Um, because them being kind to me I felt kind towards them and I suppose I, part, I kind of wanted to, to, I suppose I wanted to make them pleased with me, you know, I uh, wanted to at least show willing in the class. So I didn't sit there looking out the window or play with the various bits of chewing gum underneath the desk. 
you know, I actually took a bit more notice. Maybe I didn't absorb it, but I, I took more notice because I liked the teachers. And the first RE teacher gave me, and this is religious education, by the way, unless you didn't know. Um, my first RE teacher was a man, and he gave me a tape of the Joseph musical. I was into musicals. I liked, uh, I liked music, very into music. So I took that home and absolutely loved it. I taped it, I copied it, and I gave him the tape back. But I really liked him because he was kind and he gave me something, you know, he didn't have to do that. It's like one of the dinner ladies gave me an Elvis album, Elvis Presley's Greatest Hits. She just gave me his album because she said, oh, I think I was singing or something in the dinner. She said, oh, you like Elvis? I said, yeah, I love Elvis. She said, oh, I've got an album you can have. The next day she brought it in and gave it to me. So I liked her from forever afterwards. It doesn't take much, a little bit of kindness, you know, really. I know it's it's physical things, so maybe, but yes, but it was kindness there, I like that. Anyway, the my other Abu teacher, she was a lady, and she started describing religion in a way that I could kind of relate to by using the Star Wars analogy. So she started talking about Hinduism, and she's talking, talking about the force and talking about all, and like, I actually got interested really for the first time. I was brought up a Catholic and uh, I think, well, in my experience, uh, I find that a lot of people, maybe, well I did, if you're a kid, you're brought up thinking something, you kind of believe it and you don't question it maybe, uh, which is a shame because it's the people that don't question stuff that maybe don't learn. Maybe, that, that maybe, I don't know, gets, yeah, I think it's, I don't know. I just think that some fanatical behavior could be overridden maybe in the early stages of that fanaticism by questioning that. But that's uh, probably a conversation for another day and by someone else, because I don't wanna, I can't be bothered to talk about that, but Anyway, see, I've just been thinking about that. It's the whole idea of difference, and keep coming back to kindness. And for me, in the Big Brother, everyone was showing kindness towards India, even the people who were accidentally calling her he wasn't malice really I didn't feel that at all it was just an accident and it's just one of those things it's not she doesn't India doesn't look like a, a woman and I'm not in that in a horrible way but she she looks she doesn't or even talk like a woman it's kind of she's she feels like a woman and she's you know in her mind she's a woman and she lives a life as a woman but that's one of the the things I guess if you put her into a house with a lot of other women who quite often they put quite feminine women into those houses in the big brother house like models and things like that and it's India does stand out and uh, plus she keeps talking about it so I wish them all well but I just didn't like the hostility and I started thinking I didn't like how I felt as well like oh how would I react in that situation but then how would I react if I'd gone through all that process of changing you know physically changing my life physically changing my body going for maybe losing friends, losing family members, which I'm sure I would if I if I went and said to someone on my family, maybe some of my friends, that actually I am, uh, I, I'm a woman. I'm, I feel that I'm a woman and I always have done and I'm gonna go through the process and go through the changes and I'm gonna live my life, start living my life as a woman and I'd like you to respect that and call me Brenda and um, from now on 
I know that I would lose friends, I would lose family. Some people would find it hilarious. Some people would purposely call me he. Some people would purposely call me Jason continuously. I know that. So, it's gotta be so hard. So hard and without the other side of things where the the huge like depression and mental illness surrounded surrounded not feeling that you are who you are, not feeling that you know you're trapped in a body that you're you don't belong to. Just the idea of looking in the mirror and being disgusted at what you see, I can relate to that, but in a more deeper way. I can be disgusted at what I see, but you know, I could ultimately, I could go to the gym every day if I wanted. I could get a nose job, you know, I could have a little bit of surgery, have my bags taken from under my eyes and get myself a nice little fairy wig or, you know, or, or grow my hair. Um, maybe smarten myself up, get some decent clothes. You know, I could make some changes, get some, what's it, what's this in my eyes so I don't wear glasses, uh, contact lenses. So there are ways of change, making changes. I could educate myself so that I spoke better, that I could learn languages so I could con you know, integrate and go to places and meet new people and be able to converse with them. I can have a bath a bit more often. Lots of things. But if you're trapped, if you feel you're trapped in a wrong body, what the hell are you supposed to do? Nothing you do is going to make any difference. I mean, the only, I suppose, what, what can you do? I mean, I've known a few people, I've seen people that were going through the transition period and it is probably beyond anything that I will ever be able to really understand. Hearing someone's story doesn't mean you understand their story, I don't think. Have more of an understanding, but to really know what it feels like to be another person, you need to be in their mind and in their body. It's the only way. And we can't do that. Which is good in some ways, but absolutely it's a shame in other ways. Maybe one day we will be able to. Maybe there'll be some kind of artificial intelligence where you can swap brains for a, you know an hour and just experience each other's world view. You know, just see the world through their eyes. Just for I don't I imagine five minutes would be too long. I do sometimes look at people and it's terrible. And I know it's not true, but sometimes I do look at people and think. I wonder if anything's going on in their brain. I wonder if there's any activity at all. And I know that's it sound, probably sounds really bad. I don't mean it in a horrible way. I just I've met some people that don't seem to be having a lot going on, like verbally. And I just wonder: is uh, are they thinking about things? Are they, or is football enough for them? is just watching a football match and, you know, are they just focusing just on what they're doing there and then? Which is a very zen thing, it's a very meditative thing to focus just on what you're doing, whether it's washing up, watching football, um, not that I don't know how many zen Buddhists watch football, but um, I suppose when Tibet are, <laughs> when Tibet are playing, maybe. <laughs> um, so I don't know that's funny. So, so there's that bit of like, oh, I'm judging, I'm judging that person. And all, you know, I kind of get a little bit conflicted with there's different kinds of judgment. There's a judgment where you're maybe just look, looking down on somebody, uh, thinking you're not, you're not worth anything, you're, you're less than me and you're this and you're that and um, you know, you're short, but I'm tall. That that kind of judgment. Uh, 
I'm skinnier than you or, you know, that. But then there's a different, I suppose, a different judgment where it's questioning. It's a real interest. I am interested in what people are thinking. I don't necessarily want them to tell me. I'm not... Uh, I have more interest in what people, the people's processes than I have in actually talking to them. Because I'm not really a big... I don't really like meeting new people and talking to new people. And, you know, because it, it's a lot of pressure and socially I'm not particularly good at that stuff. Uh, it's just a... Un, yeah, I think it's... I think it's a little bit like being a juggler and then whoever you meet that's new they find you know it's like okay I'm, you're a juggler oh, can you you have to get the juggles out juggles <laughs> I know they're not called juggles but <laughs> <laughs> the jugglers carry juggles around with them um, in their pocket so, all right, I'll stick, I'm going to focus on this. So the idea that you would have to perform, that's the point I'm making. The idea of having to perform to a new person and uh, show them all the good stuff. Show them the nice side of you and that's I struggle with that sometimes because for example yesterday I was in a chemist I went to the hospital in the morning I if you want to be bored with that story you can watch yesterday's um, hypnotic buffet and I was in the this this lady this woman walked around and she had these bits that she was gonna buy and she walked over, and I, so I went to the queue. And there was a, a little stand-up thing saying, please queue here. So I did. And I noticed the woman was standing behind me, and I thought, oh, well, she was here first. I'll let her go for me. I don't want to hog, you know, get cut in line. And I turned around and said, Are you, were, you, were you here first? She said, no, no. Really quite harsh to me. Like I'd... I don't know. I felt like I sort of said something inappropriate. Like I'd walked up to her and said, oh, by the way, did you drop these tampons? Like, you know, just a, which I wouldn't do unless I saw that her dropped them. And even then it would be quite awkward. Um, especially, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about tampons in a packet, not one that's in use. But it's just the whole, no, no. And I, instantly I had this little reaction. Like, well, that was a bit harsh. I was actually trying to be kind and I'm not trying to be just just being how I am just like well you know I don't want to push in front of you and she then I thought but you know what she's queuing up in a chemist pharmacy whatever you want to call it she's queuing to get medication she possibly is unwell you know she's so that's that's it and that's I think that's worth remembering if you meet a, a grumpy old man out somewhere, maybe, and he's grumpy and he, maybe he says something to you and you think, oh, that was a bit out of order, or maybe he didn't respond in a, a way that you'd expect, just imagine that his anus is full of piles. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's got piles. Maybe he's in a lot of pain. So if you're on a bus and there's a man standing there and you offer him your seat, because he's elderly, maybe, or older and you're a young person, and there's signs saying, let elderly people have your seats. If, you know, and if he says, no, I'm fine, what, I'm gonna stand, or no. And you think, well, he's being rude, but actually, he might be in pain. Every time that bus rocks and shakes, it's rubbing those piles together and causing him pain. And for me, even though it's, It opens a, lot, a little bit of <laughs> compassion. There's a little bit of like funniness in there as well. I don't know why the word piles just makes me chuckle a little bit, but 
it is a very painful condition and it's it's awful for those people that have it it's um but the idea that you can think that or maybe they've got piles it can ease it because the little bit of humor you know it's because it's in a naughty it's in the bum area which is you know the childishness child part child part of your brain might find it funny but at the same time you won't have uh, hostility towards that man or woman whoever it you know might be um, so yeah I know I'm kind of going from <laughs> subject to subject tonight but that's, I'm alright with that Why do I keep drinking it? It's disgusting. It's like staying in a relationship that stopped working months ago. It's... I'll give it one more try. No, it's not working. Oh, one more try. No, no. But you were so kind to me. You look so appealing. And you just give it. Maybe it will work this time. No. So it's a, it's a case of just, I've been thinking about that. It's interesting though, or for me, maybe not for you, but how even when I'm talking about stuff like transgender and feeling like an alien is, comes back to kindness comes back to the idea of maybe getting in touch with that kindness that's naturally there, not, not trying to force it. There's a few little tips and tricks that we can learn, and I've learned and I can pass on some of those, and I can um, give you some of my own little ones, and I'm sure you can give me some of yours as well. In fact, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. So if you've got a few tips to that you can help with to encourage kindness maybe write it in the the comments box or whatever and you know some people might say well how could you even compare how dare you compare feeling like an alien to being uh, transgender, to feeling trapped in the wrong sex. Well, they are two very different things. But if you want to look at something that affects every aspect of your life, yeah, feeling completely, in some ways completely alone, some ways like um, an outcast, a social outcast. Yeah, I, I felt that way my whole life since I was, since I can remember my first memories, never felt like I fitted in, never understood human beings. Really, the only human really that I ever connected with really not the only one, but the one that I connected with most was my grandmother, my nan. But that was a grandson-grandmother relationship. Although I've probably thought of her in a sense like a mother as well, but you know, uh, there is that. She accepted me. She never questioned me never questioned my behavior really. She might tell me off sometimes. Uh, for example, when I stopped drinking in 2004, for a year, I stopped drinking. And she said to me, because I said to her, I don't go into pubs anymore. Not, you know, I didn't really go into pubs that much before, but I said, I don't go into pubs anymore. And she said, well, you still have to go out. Just because you stop drinking doesn't mean you have to keep away from pubs. Doesn't mean you know you still need to go out, meet people, and have a social life. This is coming from a you know someone in their eighties, 
someone quite elderly was sort of telling me this. And I thought, yeah, I suppose. There's nothing wrong with going into a pub and drinking Coke or lemonade or orange juice. It's just incredibly boring because the only thing that helped me to actually open up and be able to tolerate being around drunk people as if I'm drunk myself. Can't, can't handle, I don't like being around drunk people when I'm sober, generally. Because you're just on a different wavelength, it's a different, just completely different mentality going on. Um, yeah, well, so yeah, that's uh, There is a comparison of, I think the, I'm not gonna lose friends and family for how I am. However, I have lost friends and family for how I am. So at this stage in my life, those that I've got are probably gonna stick around until I die or they die, because they're used to me. But I have gone through friends, um, and there's been family members that I was quite got on quite well with, and now don't. Uh, friends that I got on well with, but sometimes I can't pretend anymore. There's times when the only way I can get on with people is by pretending by just keeping quiet because I am a verbal person. I have a very active mind when it comes, when it's stimulated. It's not always active. I'm, I'm technically, I, I'm, I'm kind of a weird one in a sense of I'm very, very slow. But at the same time, can be very, very quick as well it's, it's a strange one I'm not I'm not on like full full throttle all the time and I'm not going in slow motion all the time but I'm probably most of the time going in slow motion so from outward appearances I'm just a slow motion person but there's stuff going on inside so it's uh, it's a bit like a like an iceberg so you've got the iceberg that's moving very slow, but underneath its legs are going like that, <laughs> really fast. So yeah. <laughs> I like that analogy. So yeah. Um, so I managed to <laughs> talk about a serious subject without getting too serious about it. Because I know that it's incredibly serious for those that are involved, not just for the person that's going through the transition or, in some ways it isn't a transition, for someone that feels that they are a woman, starting wearing women's clothes and then going through treatment, hormone treatment, and then having the sex change operation. It's not, although it is a change, in some ways it's not, it's just, becoming who you already are, becoming who they feel they already are. So I'm just so glad that I don't feel trapped in a woman's body because, no, trapped in a man's body rather. I'd have to wear super glue, wouldn't I, if I wanted to be trapped in a woman's body. So I have to, I think the thing is, I'd make a terrible woman. I'd, I really wouldn't, I don't have the right, I'd look awful. I wouldn't look, I wouldn't make a good woman. Even when I was younger, I just don't have the, no, I just don't, I don't, I can't see myself as a woman. I used to, I used to like wearing makeup when I was at school, because I used to do drama. And I used to love wearing the, the makeup, dressing up and stuff. But I never, yeah, I used to wear women's clothes and stuff like that, because it's fun. And that's something that I think a lot of boys, men, miss out on, is actually dressing up 
in women's clothes is actually, well, I've not done it for a long time since I was a kid, but it was a lot of fun. I I'd quite like to do it now actually, but in the right circumstances. I don't think I'd really want to do it at home on my own because it sounds, then it becomes some kind of solitary secret. And also if someone knocks on the door, you know, if Amazon delivers something, I've got to go or a pizza and I've go in a full dress, makeup and click the pizza and just, it could look like I'm doing something that I'm ashamed of. But if you do it in public, in a drama place, it could be fun. You know, just opportunity to dress up. I could do Panto, I could be Cinderella. So, today's homework. No one ever does any homework, I don't know if I call it that. The minute anyone says the word homework, my brain switches off. I would never do homework anywhere for anyone under any circumstances. But I'm gonna ask you to do homework because I'm the teacher. No, I'm not. So these ideas all interwoven. There's a few little ideas there today. Some things aren't as obvious as others. Some are just an idea. Thinking about things, questioning ourselves as opposed to questioning other people. As Jesus said, you know, when it comes to judging another person, um, his way of saying, look within inside yourself before you start judging another person. He said, um, don't judge the seagull on a person's head when you've got um, furry boots on or something. I don't know, something, something like that. Or you're, it's this kind of, you know, basically don't, try to maybe look at ourselves why am I wearing the furry boots? I'm not wearing furry boots. I don't know why I'm, I'm stuck on furry boots today. I'm actually wearing plastic one, plastic, the kind of plasticky slippers because Andre, he bites into them and he can't rip them to bits because I got through two pairs of slippers when I first got him. By the way, do you want to see Andre before we go? Well, I'll step back a second. I'll get him for you. Hold there. See, there you go. Oh, B. Say hello. Hello. Oh, you smell lovely. You smell gorgeous. You do. You smell so beautiful. Oh. You smell so nice. Say hello to. Which one? Say hello to. He's licking his lips. I think he wants to say hello to everybody. Don't you? Look how cuddly you are. It's very comfortable. Oh, look at that. See, I only talk to him and he starts getting just tired and bored and he'd be falling asleep soon, wouldn't he? Your eyes would be closing, wouldn't they? Yeah? Your eyes close. So I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. And I suppose the question could be. Yeah, the homework today, which is what I've been doing throughout this, and also before I started re recording this, is what do you question about other people that maybe you could ask yourself? Uh, or what do you judge about other people that maybe you could ask yourself? Maybe you could look at your own uh, reasons behind judging. Or maybe the question could be, what do you judge about other people that other people 
might actually judge about you. So ultimately it's about looking inwards and questioning your own questioning. Why do we question other people? Why do we judge other people? And I like that, that idea of actually looking inwards because that could be transformational, really transformational. And yeah, so say goodbye, Andre. Say goodbye to everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. What, you want to say goodbye to Rachel? Who's Rachel? Oh, yeah, okay. That, oh, that Rachel, yeah. Say, say goodbye then. What, and who else? Who else you want to say goodbye to? Who else? What, Boston Chicky and Sebastian? And, oh, there's quite a few. Anyway, I'm gonna go. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you tomorrow for another version of this thing. Um, so remember, you can watch this on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, you can download the MP3 um, and listen to the MP3 on iTunes and SoundCloud. And my website is jasonnewland.com. All the videos and uh, downloads are also on my uh, website. So basically, every day I put them on there. So you can click. When you go to the website, on the right-hand side on the menu, it says Hypnotic Buffet 2018. Click on there, and every day is added. So there's four on there at the moment, and there will be five after I've recorded this and uploaded it. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Ow.